I started the year of FDS, I mentioned that I wasn't collecting the games. Since the FDS is magnetic, rewritable media, buying an old FDS game really meant buying the label on the disc. Well, there is one exception to that. And it's not the disc in the case of Doremiko. It's that this is the only Famicom Disk System game that requires its own special peripheral. If you want that, really you have to buy the whole game. And that is not cheap. I spent 30,000 yen on my copy, and I got it that cheap because the box is sun-faded. Which means that this is the most expensive episode of the year of FDS. This episode costs roughly 100 yen a second, so really savor it. Dore Miko isn't really a game. It's essentially software to interface the keyboard peripheral with the Famicom and turn the whole unit into a synthesizer. There's a few game-ish things that you can do, but really you're just there to play the keyboard. That keyboard is a bit of a strange beast. It's scaled down roughly about three quarters from a regular keyboard and covers three octaves. If you want to change what octave is at the center of the keyboard, you'll need to hit left and right on the Player 2 controller. The cable is absurdly short. Japanese controller cables of this era often are, but this might be about 75 centimeters. It's short enough that you're going to have a real struggle finding a way so that you can set it up to play and not yank that cord around. I have to mention something at this point that impacts everything going forward. You see, that very expensive keyboard I've got doesn't work properly. I bought it four months ago, and this recording is the first chance I've had to break it out and try it. All of the F and B keys don't work, and since those are all six keys apart, it points to there being a broken signal line. I didn't have my equipment handy to work on it or diagnose it, or even hack together my own version. Pulling it apart, you can see that there's a Konami-branded chip that handles all of the signal processing. And if that's bad, well, then I've got a real headache. But that's okay. I'm also not a very good keyboard player. So when you notice that I don't miss some easy things, but then kind of get close to some others, that's probably what's happening. From the main menu, you have three options. Concert, Practice, and Piano. Piano's the easy one. You just load it up, and then play. One neat thing about Doremiko is that it uses four sound channels for a single instrument, and that means you can play chords. Which I know doesn't sound very impressive for a music program, but it's one of those things that's weirdly hard to do on the Famicom. So besides just playing things on the keyboard, you can hit select to bring up a menu. There you can switch between piano and organ, and go into an option where you can record your music. Doremiko also has four pre-recorded songs in it, and you can play one of them back here for you to accompany. This menu also gives you control over the tempo of the music, which is something you're going to need. The middle option on the main menu is for practicing the four songs included on the disc. Here you select a box, and that will determine which song you're playing, then press start to begin the music. As the backtrack plays, keys will light up to tell you what you should be pressing. The four songs included are The Skater's Waltz, Jingle Bells, Happy Birthday, which I don't think they licensed, and the Stage 1 music from Gradius. Now if you're musically inclined, two of those should have made you go, wait, really? Isn't this supposed to be for beginners? And the answer to that is yes, and as Konami would demonstrate with their other rhythm games, they don't care if you're a beginner. Even Jingle Bells and Happy Birthday have some flourishes applied to them that make it extremely difficult to follow along. The final mode is a concert mode, where you're given an accompanying band whose instruments are selected by what style you pick. You also have a much wider range of instrument choice yourself, though here you're restricted to just one channel. You're able to record entirely new tracks for each band member, so theoretically you can make many song you like. And that's it for Dore Miko. There's nothing else to it. Like I said, it exists solely so that you can use a keyboard with your Famicom. If there's anything really notable about it, it's that Dore Miko is Konami's first music, well, not really game, but first music software. Ten years from now, rhythm games will be Konami's bread and butter. 
and they'll even have another keyboard game that is absurdly difficult to play along with. Even in Japan, Doremiko is pretty obscure and is only known for that peripheral. And as I'm noodling around with this with no particular goal, I'm actually struck by how I'd much rather use other programs to make music on my Famicom. The only composer was clunky and you couldn't do sharps and flats, but it was easier to manage. And the composition mode in Otaki was very flexible and you could play your song as a shoot 'em up. Doremiko is just a very expensive novelty, and definitely not something worth chasing down.